Malaika's Costume by Nadia El Hun. Pictures by Irene Luxbacher. I close my eyes and dance. I am a beautiful peacock. Each feather shimmers green, gold, turquoise, and brown. Grandma say, girl, I think you is definitely my granddaughter for true. This is the first carnival time with mummy gone. She in Canada, Uncle Ingrid say. Canada is a place where she can get a good job. She going to make a better life for you and grandma. Canada is cold like an icebox, and something they call snow is on the ground. Mummy tell me. She sent me pictures too. The snow looked like coconut sky juice. She say the children play in it and build man with it. What a sticky mess. If there's so many jobs in Canada, how come Grandma and I have been waiting so long, long for the money? Money say she would send to make my costume. Carnival soon come and everyone getting their costume ready. Michael and Junior are playing Jab Molassi in the Kitty Carnival. They wearing briefs and blue paints. Ravenna and Shelly are red hibiscus. They wearing their saris and looking like brides. Malcolm and Marcus are still dancing. Loco Jumbies. They look like giraffes. Even the Johnson baby, Ivan, has a Fuero costume. He's still crawling. Everyone practice their dance moves. Everyone except me. I don't feel like dancing anymore. Today a letter come, but after Grandma open it, she looks sad. I just know what the writings say, and big teardrops roll down my face. Grandma go to her room. She come back with an old red cardboard suitcase that I never seen before. She pull out a green and purple costume covered in gold sequins and dangling ribbons. This was my carnival costume when I was a girl. Grandma make me put on the tired costume. It smell funny and it's dusty. The costume squeeze my belly and some of the sequins fall off. I feel hot and itchy. Grandma, I don't like it. I won't wear this tear up old thing, I say. And with that, I pull off the costume, hearing it rip. I run, run, run with my hot, dry feet. I pass two goats drinking from a puddle. I pass a few neighbor, neighbors' yards. Mr. De Silva, Ms. Blake, Pastor Sin, and I pass the Clapham Church where Grandma sometimes took me. I see the old men in front of the little shop. Across the street, I see Menelik, the Rasta man, who sell us the cassava chips and jelly coconut that I like so much. I almost reach the Obia lady's old house at the end of the street. I stop. I don't know where else to go. Then I began to hear a song that I know. It's playing on someone's stereo. It goes. I started to beat Pan at the age of six. Me, grandmother, tell me. It is true we are poor, but we have dignity. This is one of grandma's favorite Kaiser songs. I run to Mrs. Chin, the tailor lady around the corner. Do you have any throwaway cloth? I just need a few rags, I say. Chili, is grandma making you some more dolls? She asked in her sing-song kind of voice. I think about my two pretty rag dolls, Cece and Dee Dee, sitting on my bed. No, ma'am, for a surprise, I say. Mrs. Chin turn around and go into her room. She come back with a 
big red plastic bag. It was flowing over with pieces of ripped up cloth, all in different colors. I smiled. Thank you, ma'am, I said. And then I run all the way back home. I bang the door open. Grandma, Grandma, guess what I find? I yell while holding the handle of the bag tight. Shh, hush, child, Grandma said. She looked at me with a sad face, and then I start to cry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to run off and say those things. All right, Malaika, you do better now, she smiled. Now, what you bring? I show her the bag of cloth, and I smile when I tell her my idea. Then it's Grandma's turn to surprise me. While I ran away, she fixed the costume and wiped it clean with soap and rose water. Then she sprinkled a little baby powder inside so it smells sweet and fresh. I see the clean costume hanging on the clothing line, drying in the sun. It smells nice, Grandma, I said. Well, my dear, she said, what will you be this year? A rainbow peacock. will be shiny and proud and strong, I say. I find tiny turquoise, green, gold, and brown buttons in Grandma's sewing box to glue on to make the head. I find two clear buttons for the eyes. They look like sparkling jewels. The body round and full of bright feathers, Grandma. We rip, rip, rip small pieces of this colorful cloth then tie them onto the body of the costume. Ooh, red chiffon, blue silk, jade lace, purple ribbon, Grandma whispered. The words sound like music to my ear. And glow old stocking on its legs. Grandma pull out some crinkled stocking from the suitcase and a pair of slippers. There are some old, so there are some holes in the stocking but Grandma helped me to patch them up with pieces of cloth. Grandma, this rainbow peacock have patchwork legs, I laugh. We glue, sew, and tie the cloth onto the body. Grandma even helped me make cuffs for my arms out of copper cloth so that it looked like wings. I twist in some gold wires to add extra feathers. I carefully pull the peacock bodysuit on Grandma put on my peacock head, just so. I look in the mirror. The costume fit me, and I shine from head to toe. Who looking so lovely? Girl, this costume looked better than ever, Grandma said, and she was right. I'm even more beautiful than the peacock in my dream. The next morning, I jumped out of bed. It's time, Grandma. It's time. I put on the costume again, real slow. But then I start to feel bad. It was Mummy who used to help me dress, dress for carnival. Grandma, can we take some pictures today? I want to show Mummy. Of course, child. Your brother wouldn't want to miss this, and she would be so proud you make your costume, she said. Grandma takes me to the streets of the Kitty Carnival Parade where all of the people are bouncing and dancing to the music. Soka and Calypso rhythms fill the streets. I see Ms. Chen. Wow, look what you've made. You look beautiful, darling, she said. Who's that coming down the road? Carnival Queen? Uncle Ebert laughed. I march out to the front like a proud peacock. 